G'day and welcome to another episode of Building Ideas. As the name suggests, we've got some pretty cool, innovative segments and stories to share with you today. Our feature host is in the Decellus Homes. Now, as you can see, these Decellus Homes have the award-winning quality that we are used to. They also have some pretty cool natural gas innovation and integration. But before we get to that, let's see what else is on the show. Along with exploring this Decelli's home, Terry conducts a practical completion inspection with our friends from House Inspect Australia. He also gets an update on the ever-evolving and thriving Play for the Live community. And I pop out to visit the team at Sarah to learn about their incredible game-changing modular construction. But first, what do you get when you partner Newton's Building and Landscape Supplies with Jeffrey's Soil? Well, let's find out. Jeffries is a locally owned family business that makes soils, mulches, composts and other gardening products, many of which are recycled. Newton's Building and Landscape Supplies is an iconic SA business that has all the hardware, landscape, gardening, how are you mate? And all the other supplies you could possibly want. Now, you bring the two brands together and well, you got a green thumbs heaven. You can't go far on our Adelaide roads without seeing a Newton's truck delivering something to a happy customer. And quite often, it's a Jefferies product. So Theo, what sort of customers buy the Jefferies range? Anywhere from the DIY customers, to tradies, to the commercial guys, all the way up to government. It doesn't matter what job it is, uh, we always seem to accommodate everybody that, that wants a Jefferies product. If I can't come here to get the range, uh, can you guys deliver it to me? Most definitely. We're usually out in sight between two and five hours. Um, we can go anywhere in Adelaide. It's not an issue for us. Because you've got quite the fleet, haven't you? Yeah, there's over 32 trucks in our fleet, um, ranging from little three and a half tonners all the way up to your big uh, truck and dogs, they like to call them, up to 30 tonnes. And we'll go everywhere and accommodate as much as we can. Well, who says size doesn't matter? Yes, the Newtons team can deliver the range of Jefferies products, but if there's anything else you need from aggregates, loams, sands, and even equipment, they can deliver that too. Theo, this is the most popular product. What is it? Oh, that's called Recover. Yeah, right. What does it consist of? Um, it's got uh, bits of uh, compost in there, a bit of blood yeah. and bone, and also some big bits in there as well to help with drainage in your garden. And it's a real versatile, uh, good-looking mulch. Um, you know, if you've got green plants, you put that at the base of it. It makes them all look nice and obviously feeds your garden as well at the same time. How much do you sell of this? Oh, two, three truckloads a week. Wow. Yeah, it's very popular. And during spring, like, it would be even more popular? Oh, it goes off, off the charts. Really? Awesome. It makes your plants look better. If you want to give back to your garden, your footpath, your lawn, or the ground you walk on, I can't see why you wouldn't use a Jefferies product. Now, if you don't know what product is the right one for your project, well, that's a simple fix. Come and see the guys at Newton's Building and Landscape Supplies. They know everything that you need to know about your project. You'd be surprised. There might be something else here you need to, and you don't know it yet. Well, it looks like this episode is going to be cooking with gas. Now, these two Decellus homes, which can be visited here in Virginia Grove, have carefully considered the integration of natural gas, both inside and out. Log fireplaces, gas cooktops, plus the new heating and cooling innovation that is Climate Wizard. More on that after the break. Do, 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 do. It's an exciting time when your house is approaching completion. You start to visualise your life in your new home. You're dotting your I's, you're crossing your T's, and it's the time when House Inspect Australia like to complete their practical completion inspection. What's cool about that is they do this with you and the builder. So what exactly happens at the practical completion inspection? So we come in and 
uh, check over the house. It's practically finished, so there'll be a few bits and pieces around that aren't quite done, but it gives us an opportunity to have a look at the overall finished quality of the product. Um, and also gives us the opportunity to have uh, a look at items that we would have picked up in a previous inspection, make sure they've been completed and everything's up to standard and code. We're not expecting perfection at this stage, are we? No. Like I said, there'll be, there'll be some items that aren't, aren't quite done, aren't quite finished, um, and it has to be built to code and standards. So we've got the, the, the building code that we, we, uh, we follow, so yeah. as long as we're, we're meeting the code or exceeding the code, we're going to be happy. At this stage, we're, we're checking for compliance. Tell me more about that. The house has been fitted off, so power points are in, light switches are in, um, sometimes appliances in, sometimes they may not be. So we'll be looking at, uh, at items to make sure that so our power point's not cl too close to a, a, a sink um, or a laundry trough, so forth. Um, we'll be looking under the, under the kitchen sink, making sure the pipe penetrations are sealed. Just, yeah, everything's up to standard. Mike, I've seen the team getting around this particular house and I've seen some interesting tools of the trade. What are they looking for? So you'll see our team coming around and putting up our little stickers around the place. So in any, any items that, that we spot, um, that don't meet code or standard, we'll put one of our stickers on there and, and document that in our report. That goes back to the owner and the building supervisor, so they've got a list of items that they, they need to attend to. It must give your customers peace of mind knowing that there's a full team at House Inspect Australia, not just one or two people, you've got a full skilled, qualified team at their disposal. We'd be the largest inspection company in the state. Um, and yeah, we've got a team of professionals from a variety of trade backgrounds. Um, and you know, again, we're, we're not just House Inspect Australia are builders, um, our team are all builders as well. So whether you're looking to buy, maybe you're renovating or you are building from scratch, whether it's the footings, whether it is the framework, the roof work, the waterproofing, whether it's inspecting for pests, or like today, doing a practical completion inspection. The award-winning team at House Inspect Australia is ready and willing to help. Isn't that right, Litza? Absolutely, Terry. Yanni, not so much. He's out the door. Trust me, give the guys a call. It'll be worth it. If you're looking for the latest in home comfort technology, then the Climate Wizard product might be for you. It has got tons of benefits, but what do I know? Don't take it from me. Let's hear from someone in the know. Jacob, what sets the CW3 apart from other heating and cooling systems? Yeah, absolutely, the CW3 uses fresh air, normal, natural air from outside. Ventilating within the home uh, has costs less than a reverse cycle to run, up to 60% savings. That's uh, huge. It's absolutely massive, but it's the fill. It's the fill, so uses a reverse cycle like cooling, but with less cost, essentially. All right. When you're talking savings, how much exactly? You're talking upwards of 60%. Wow. Absolutely huge. It's an, And once again, it brings in fresh, cool air into your home, but with that reverse cycle like cooling. So it ticks the box when it comes to cooling. Yes. What about heating? Absolutely, so it utilises a natural ducted gas heating system. So with reverse cycle, it's a bit more, bit more dry, whereas yeah. you don't get that with natural ducted gas heating, and it's much more instant. So what I'm hearing a lot of is for cooling, for heating, natural, I'm hearing the, like the words natural a lot, that must be something you're proud of. Absolutely, absolutely. So a natural gas ducted heating system is what's utilised with the CW3. It's more instant warmth, and it's, uh, it's a lot less dry as well. Everyone wants to be renewable gas or hydrogen gas ready. Is CW3 ready for that? Yes, so the best thing about the CW3, it is hydrogen ready. That is the best thing for when hydrogen is ready to come into the market. And what about from a, like a homeowner's point of view, using CW3 or Climate Wizard technology, is it easy to use? Absolutely, so all utilising from a magic touch controller, an all-in-one touchscreen controller. You can zone your home so you can utilise different areas at different times. You don't have to have the whole system on, whether that's cooling or heating. And automators are an app as well that you... Absolutely, so Wi-Fi ready, you can utilise that within the home or when you're on your way home from work. So all, all at your iPhone or Android device. That's cool. So you can do the old coming back from the beach, yep. turn the air conditioner on. Yeah, absolutely, yes. absolutely. If someone wants to know more about the CW3 technology, they want to be renewable gas ready, they want to have efficiency and great cooling in their home, 
and heating, where do they go? Absolutely, visit us at www.rightpriceheatingandcooling.com.au and you can put in an inquiry and uh, contact us that way. I had a feeling you'd say that. <laughs> <laughs> Jacob at Right Price certainly knows all about the CW3 technology and what I love is that it's hydrogen and renewable gas ready. I also think if you're building a new home or maybe if you're renovating, you should think about including the CW3. If you haven't got a builder, well, pick up the phone. Call to Chellis. If you've been anywhere around Adelaide, you have probably heard of Sarah Construction. Now, you might have seen their signs at construction sites. Well, they're a family business, and in the industry, they're known for being innovative, for being efficient, and for really being a bit creative. If you're, if you're a client with a tricky situation, they can probably figure out how to solve it. There's something you might not know about Sarah. They have turned their attention to a new, far more sustainable, far more efficient way of making buildings. It's called modular. What does that look like? Well, looks like this right here. We're standing in it. So tell me about the modular approach. What's it all about? So we look at modular as a great solution to many of our customers' problems. So customers come to us with problems like wanting to work in limited time, um, you know, operational sites where they don't want to impact operations, um, maybe even regional remote areas. What a modular allows us to do is analyse that construction sequence and just work out what parts of the construction sequence we can take offline and do in our warehouse. It's sounding like a, a new sort of level of efficiency from, from where I'm standing. Yeah. What are the main reasons why people would jump on board with that option? You know, if you think about a hospital or a school, um, you know, where we, they have to remain operationally functional. They're, they're great examples of where modular can be very useful because we send our trades here to the warehouse and we send our deliveries here to the warehouse. So um, that means when we deliver to site, there's less, there's less trades in that operational environment, there's less deliveries, which means they can go about their, their ordinary business. We also find people who want reduced timeframes. Um, in, with our modular program, we build concurrently on site and in the warehouse, which means the overall construction duration is less, which means that we can turn projects around quite quickly. And certainly anyone who's in a remote or regional community, you know, you're often got supply chain issues or um, struggle to get access to trades. So we can build it here in our warehouse, break it up and um, transport it out remotely as well in this environment. You know, there's lots of control, so we're getting great quality products. We're working really efficiently. We're not sort of getting slowed down by weather or rain or even hot weather. Yeah, and also working really sustainably. What are some of the main reasons that schools in particular benefit from this? Schools definitely have some of the constraints we're talking about, so reduced timeframes on site. So one of our recent um, modular deliveries was at Marriottville High School, and we actually delivered that between the summer holiday periods. So kids left school and there was no building, and they came back and they had new classrooms. Um, so that was a great result for the school. So what are some of the, the ways that this approach en enables you to be more sustainable? From the very beginning, um, we actually model these. Because we're building concurrently on site and in the warehouse, we model, it, model them fully in the computer. And then what we're able to do is take the teachers and the students through the model. Um, so they actually can comment on the design in that design phase. Um, so they wear virtual reality headsets and, and take a look, which is a lot of fun. And we can fabricate those modules using the model and sort of, you know, incorporate standard lengths, reduce offcuts and really minimise our waste. I think construction contributes about 30% or 40% to all landfill. So if we can actually work at minimising our waste, then that's a great result. Oh, I'm getting flashbacks to my old school days. Now, this is probably going to make me sound really old, but when I was in school, the portable classrooms were just the old daggy ones in the back of the schoolyard. You know, they were hot in the summer and cold in the winter. But this, to me, really does feel like a new era in modular building. These buildings just feel so much more thoughtful. Now, this one here is headed off to Glenelg Primary School, so if you're in the area, why not check it out? And if you want to know more about Sarah, you can always visit their website. The more I walk through these two stunning Decellus homes, the more I see the influence that thoughtful integration of natural gas can have on your living experience. To get that, you first got to get connected. It's pretty simple really. If it's a new home, speak to your builder and they can arrange everything for you. If you're an owner or builder and need help with the process, 
Australian gas networks are ready to help. Either picking up the phone or visiting their website will provide you with the right steps to get you gas ready. Hi. Yeah. Well, she says we've got a gas problem. No, well, not really we. She says it's me. Exactly. Yes, natural gas. That's what I told her. I know. There's a list of things that you want to tick off so that you can achieve the lifestyle that you want. Now, it's been a little while since we've checked out the Playford Alive development, but I tell you what, a lot has changed. You want the home that you fall in love with, but you also want to consider things like, am I close to what's important to me? Like schools, shops, the doctor, transport. And for me personally, having a young family, I want to know whether I'm close to parks and the outdoors. The one thing I notice when you come into the area is that everything's so connected, isn't it? Right at the outset of the project, um, there was a master plan that was established to make sure that we capture all of the requirements of you know, the community that was to come. Yeah. And um, yeah, it, it really provides everything. You're big on giving back to the community too, aren't you? One of the initiatives from the outset was that a certain percentage of each allotment that's sold within the project goes into what we call the Play for the Lives Initiatives Fund, which is basically a community fund. Um, funds from there have been used to build community facilities like the Stretton Centre, which is a community library and uh, also in the upper floors there they actually um, operate an incubator um, centre for small businesses that are starting out. Great. Now for someone that's interested in, in buying in the area, there's a lot of uh, incentive and bonus packs out there. Can you tell me some more about that? Firstly, in terms of the prices within the area, it, it is very competitive. We just see so many great stories of yeah. people that you know, start out in the home ownership sort of path out here, um, and many of them end up staying here. There is a real sort of variety of um, housing that you'll see here from small lot type houses where we create terraces, um, going through to more, you know, larger four bedroom, you know, family type homes. So that that's, um, gives everyone an opportunity to get into the market. Yeah, it's good to know that there is, there is a great housing mix that's available for the needs of various people. And when someone buys a block of land off of us, um, we, um, we actually offer what we call the bonus pack. Yep, uh, I which, like this, uh, bonus pack, I like it. That's it. Tell me more. Yeah, um, what it is is we actually uh, arrange for perimeter fencing, colour bond, um, good neighbour type fencing around the perimeter of the allotment, uh, tubular steel type fencing uh, out the front as well as the landscaping out the front of the dwelling as well. So, you know, it gives those people that perhaps where their budget's a bit tight, they can um, end up with a fully established home, uh, looks good from the street, yeah. and make sure that your neighbours also have a, a well-presented house. Yeah, and landscaping is often one of those areas that at the end you've run out of budget and gets left till years it, later sometimes. Yeah, exactly. And so by doing it that way, People end up with a fully established front yard and um, as I said they also know that their their next door neighbour is going to end up with the same. Yeah. Is there one particular feature in the precinct and in the area that you're proud of? Yeah look I, I think it's this town park. Um, we see people here from you know early in the morning right throughout the day. You know the, the, the water play area is very popular as the weather warms up a bit. Yeah. Um, kids on their skateboards um, and scooters etc. Um, yeah there's, there's people that use this facility all the time. I can imagine there's people watching this and they're sort of becoming very interested and wanting to know more. There is an information centre uh, here within the precinct. Tell us about that. In the middle of this year we, we um, moved into a new sales and information centre. Gives people the opportunity to come and speak to our sales agents about acquiring a block of land, but then also putting it together with a, a, a build from a, a um, builder within South Australia. So if you're looking for a place that truly puts people and community first, you should come and check out Playford Alive. There is plenty of display homes to look at, and there's the information centre to answer all your questions. Go on. 
do it. Where am I going to go first? I think I'm going here. Wow, Playford really is alive and well. Also looking good is next week's episode. Bianco is our host partner and we have some special appearances from the SA Housing Authority, Renewal SA and Dulux take us on a tour of their factory right here in Adelaide. Thanks for joining us today and a special thanks to all of our show contributors. Be sure to check out their websites or even visit their social pages to see what they're up to. Look forward to seeing you again next week.